Okay, the hearing on HB 244 uh, will begin. Uh, I'd like to start this off with... 455. 455. 455. I'm sorry. Uh, 244. Somebody fill, uh, Alex? Yes. You filled out 244? Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll so you, you want to speak on 455? Correct. You can easily Okay. Um, Representative uh, Lyle Buellis. Buellis. Got it right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Lyle Buellis. Representative uh, Grafton One, the towns of Littleton and Lima. Uh, I'm here this afternoon as sponsor of House Bill 455, an act authorizing optional enhanced driver's licenses and optional enhanced non-driver's picture identification cards. What is that? That's a, uh, uh, a process allowed by Department of Homeland Security where a driver's license can be embedded with RFID uh, to make border crossings easier. It functions the same as a passport for terrestrial base travel for Canada, Bermuda, the Caribbean, and Mexico. Uh, that's all you need. The way you do it is when you drive up to the port of entry, as you if you've been through there lately, you have to stop about 50 feet away. Uh, you just hold your driver's license up to the window. Everybody in the car has one. And when the agent or the customs person waves you on, as you drive by, it reads the data. It's all on the screen, and away you go. Not away you go, but, you know, the general idea. <laughs> so it functions the same as a passport, except it's on your driver's license, and it's good for those four areas. Uh, Again, this is optional, so you don't have to have it. If, if I could just kind of go through the bill for just a minute, a couple of the key points, uh, line number 9 and 10. The cost for this is an additional fee of $30. That's it. So uh, if you decide you want to get it now and your license expires in three years, well, it's $30. If it expires in one year, it's $30. If you renew, it's $30 over and above the cost of the license. So there's no license modifications. Line 15 simply states that the department may enter into a memorandum of understanding with any federal agency. Uh, right now, it's Department of Homeland Security, but if that was to merge into some other agency, this would cover that. Lines 24, 25, and 26. What this does is simply lay out what the options are for an applicant for a driver's license. Uh, an applicant may choose to apply for a standard driver's license, a standard non-driver picture ID, which a lot of senior citizens have now, or an enhanced driver's license, or an enhanced non-driver's picture card. So, they now have an additional option. On uh, page two, for lines 14 and 15, somebody can't go in and get an enhanced license and have that new license negate or cancel any actions that are pending against their license already. So, if they're in the process of losing their license, they're still going to lose their license no matter what they do. You know, uh, a few years ago, if you lost your license, your driver's license, your operator's license for some reason or other, you go get a motorcycle license. Well, you can't do that anymore, and so this just reinforces that. Uh, and with line uh, 16, 17, the identification card will not modify the expiration date. So it keeps everything pristine in the way that DMV is handling licenses and license renewals now. <clears throat> so. That's, uh, that's the essence of the bill itself. I gave you a, a handout, and the top part is just a copy of a, uh, a handout from Department of Homeland Security, and it talks about what we were talking about here. 
there are actually four ways that you can have a border crossing document. One is the conventional passport, looking from right to left. Then uh, Homeland Security offers these other trusted traveler programs. Um, on the, uh, the left panel, at the top, it, show, it says new. That's a US passport card. I'll get to that in a minute. That one has the same privileges and restrictions as what we're talking about here with the enhanced driver's license, but there is a difference. Then it says uh, the driver's licenses are underneath that. So presently, New York State has it, Vermont has it, Michigan, and the state of Washington. So those are the states that have it now. Cost summaries uh, underneath that, the US passport's $150, it's good for 10 years. The passport card, which I referenced there, is $70. That's good for 10 years. New Hampshire enhanced license is $30 for five years. Vermont uh, charges $25. New York charges $30. Uh, Michigan and Washington, I put those numbers down there, but they have uh, uh, a complex way of calculating how much it costs, but I just wanted to put some numbers in for those two states. Interesting, the state of New York, they implemented this, I forget exactly when, I think it was uh, 2006, 2007. At any rate, at the end of 2009, they had over 100,000 enhanced driver's license holders. So obviously, uh, a benefit there. The one other thing um, with this, well, two things. Let me give you a couple of examples. Say you want to go on your 40th wedding anniversary, a cruise to the Caribbean. $30 for you, $30 for your wife, $60. To go get a passport, $300. Let's say another hypothetical example. You, your wife, and your mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law has a non-driver's ID card. My mother-in-law used to have one of those. It's just great. You want to cash a check or whatever. Any place that an ID is necessary. So she would like to go back to uh, Quebec, visit some family up there. Well, let's see. You, your wife, and your mother-in-law, passports, $150 a piece. That's $450. The enhanced driver's license, $90. You know, I guess we're going to go. Money's not a problem here. So uh, that's the advantages to the program. Again, it's optional. Uh, and I think that this would be a real good service for a good offering for the citizens of New Hampshire. Director Bailey from the Department of Motor Vehicles is here this afternoon. And he'll go into the mechanics and the implementation and all of that. Uh, one other thing is, there's a little economic benefit here, and I just thought of this the other day, but up in the northern part of the state where we have a, a person up there from DRED, Department of Resources and Economic Development, that is trying to attract businesses to northern New Hampshire. One of the places that he is looking, Vino Lamonte, one of the places that he's looking is Canada and Quebec to get them to bring subsidiaries down into northern New Hampshire. Well, you know, if somebody did that and they had 10 employees that would have to go back and forth across the border for meetings, training, whatever, that's only $300 rather than $1,500. So I just put that in as an aside. Um, lastly, you only have one document. It's the one that's in your wallet, driver's license, that allows you to do all these things. No more getting to the border and saying, uh, uh, okay, wife, you got our passports, don't you? And she says, well, no, you brought them, didn't you? You got it with you all the time. One piece, one document. That's my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Uh, question for you. You talked about... Um, the license being uh, taken away. So does that, uh, in other words, if, if you lose your license, you also would then lose the benefit of the uh, enhanced ID as well too? Or is there a provision that says you lose your license for erratic driving, um, but we'll give you a, um, a driver's ID that 
uh, works as in, in the same capacity as the enhanced uh, license. If you lose your license, you lose your license. But you could go get a non-driver's license ID card. And pay $30 a second. Pay your $30 over and above the cost of the non-driver's ID card and have that option. Now, there are some offenses, though, uh, Director, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe did WI, you can't use it in Canada. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. I see the fiscal note was not um, able to be brought forward. Um, do you have any idea what it's going to cost the state to secure this technology, or are we are going to allow someone else to I, do a, 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 a recognized New Hampshire license? I understand that. Uh, I understand your your concern with that. Uh, I would defer to Director Bailey to answer that question specifically, but I have worked with DMV throughout this process of crafting this legislation, and you'll notice that the effective date is 2013, and I think that he will address that when he talks about their systems and upgrades and things like that, but uh, uh, I, I'll leave that for him. Thank you. For the record, if you are convicted of DWI in New Hampshire or any in the United States, you are not permitted access to Canada. That is their law. So, thank you for that clarification. I had heard that, but I wasn't sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question for you, sir. Is there any, uh, I mean, have you heard anything? It seems as though, uh, is there anything in Canada that allows them to, do they have a similar? Yes, they do. Driver's license. If, and if you look on the uh, on the handout I gave you, it's kind of grayed out, but Canada offers the same thing. So they have a passport system for air travel and travel to other countries, but they do have an enhanced driver's license for the United States. Thank you. I work under Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Representative. Uh, do you know how much the RFID industry is going to benefit from this? Uh, my intent is not to benefit the RFID industry. My intent is to provide a benefit and a service to the citizens of New Hampshire. Oh, of course. And what the arrangement is with the RFID industry and the DMV and that, I'll leave that to the director. It said that we sell 100,000 of these. You know, sure. how, do you know how much they would make off of it? Because no idea. Okay. Thank you very much. Not for me. One more question. Representative, um, there's going to be some argument, I suspect, that says that RFID is a plot and, and it's a tool for people <coughs> to, to monitor uh, what and where and how we do whatever we do. How would you answer that? By the first sentence of the legislative, legislative proposal, authorizing optional. In other words, you, the applicant, you have that choice as to whether or not you want to have an RFID bearing document in your wallet or not, and that's that's what it, it's a, it's an option. It's really a comment. Um, several years ago, I was involved with the security world, and I recall a lot of discussion between Canadian authorities, the state of Vermont, and the um, federal agencies in crafting this uh, license uh, for both Canadian and, and New Hampshire uh, U.S. residents because the economies are so interconnected. Yes. Thank you. It is an option, for, yeah. uh, and, and that, I, I, I would not want to mandate anything like that. But, it wasn't a question there, I just thought I'd throw that Well, I, I heard a question. It's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, having that option, I think, because there are folks in Littleton who have relatives in, in Quebec, they would love to go back and forth. Um, you know, a cruise to the Caribbean is wonderful. And if I want to do it, go get one of these licenses. But to me, that's the way to go, rather than the full passport. Mr. Chair, um, just to point out something, uh, you say it's optional, correct? Um, 
How many times does something start optional and then end up being mandated? Uh, let's take kindergarten, for example. It started out optional, now it's mandated. And, um, well, yeah. the law can be changed. But oh, yes. right now, should the committee see fit to do this now and everything, um, it will be in statute as optional. Uh, and I'm guessing this, well, would, would there be any intentions to start this out optional and then, let's say, the waves change and the Democrats take control of the state house again and it ends up, and it, it ends up being mandated? I'm uh, just a little concerned about that. Could be repealed. Oh, thank you. Thank you again, Representative. I just thought of something from our hearings in the last session regarding this. Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there are a lot in the House I think that are. And I mean no disrespect to those. What is the range on this? RFID that's in your wallet that you don't want someone to know your information other than an official border crossing or something like that. Does this have any effective range where, I, I mean, we can clone cell phones, we can clone all kinds of stuff. Do, do we run into a problem? Well, I'm not a student of RFID, so I can't say per se. I know of it and its uses and its benefits and also as far as personal tracking, you know, I think that, that the potential is there. Again, being optional, that's good. A lot of times, though, we give up our rights because we want to have a benefit. So you have a cell phone. If you look at your cell phone, you have a little diamond in there. And you cannot shut that off. And what that diamond does is if you ever call 911, it immediately makes your location available. So you could be calling in 911 for the benefit of a third party, and yet your location is known. So we, we make these trade-offs a little bit as far as somebody being able to sit over at the state house and read your life driver's license. I, you know, I again, I'm not a student of it, so I'm not going to venture into that. This is a would you believe? Um, would you believe that I don't have to have a cell phone? but I do have to have a driver's license. No, I wouldn't believe that. You don't need to have a driver's license. It's your choice. To do any type of transactions or anything like that, to get a job, pretty much it's a given, you need it. You can get a non-driver's license ID card. That all the questions? Thank you very much. Chairman and members of the committee, for the record, my name is Alex Katrubis with Dennehy and Boulay, and today I'm representing HID Global, which is a leading manufacturer of secure identity solutions and contactless smart card technology for physical access control. HID Global fully supports House Bill 455 because it will give New Hampshire citizens the option for applying and receiving an enhanced driver's license or an, or an EDL. Or, an, or a non-driver picture identification card that will speed their travels via land and sea borders. In addition, the EDL offers to Hampshire citizens a cost-effective, viable alternative to obtaining and paying for a US, U.S. passport or U.S. pass card, as we heard uh, from, the, from the prime sponsor of the bill. New Hampshire citizens that apply for and obtain an EDL or an enhanced identification card will be able to use the card as proof of eligibility to drive across land and sea borders. And I'm including an article uh, from the state of Washington, which was the first state to uh, begin issuing these licenses, and you can see that it was a very successful and very popular program in that state. And with that, I'll, I'll uh, conclude my remarks and distribute my testimony. I have a question. You sure. mentioned on your code, e -E enhanced enhanced driver's license. E E D L is the abbreviation that people use. Enhanced driver's license or E D L. E D L enhanced driver's license, and that's what this is. 
Correct. A couple years ago, we had a bill pertaining to uh, real ID, and we rejected it as a state. Right. Where do you put this? Where, because I'm getting a lot of constituents asking me this question, so I have a, I have a concern. Real, this is not real ID. This is real ID was a federal national ID card, a, a federal program. This is strictly a state program run by the Department of Safety, run by the state of New Hampshire. This is not real ID. It's a totally separate program. I'm going to follow up on that too. If this is a state program, how does the state grant us permission to travel into Mexico, Bermuda, or can in Canada? The, the Department of Homeland Security, the, the Department of Safety would enter into an agreement as Vermont has, as New York has, as Michigan has, as Washington State has, an agreement that our, that our program meets their federal requirements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Will there be a need for us to exchange any information with Homeland Security or any other federal agency in an effort to consummate this type of arrangement you just articulated? I believe that's the case, but I think that the uh, DOS could probably answer that better than I could. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. No more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair uh, and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Joel Winters, and uh, here today on behalf of myself in opposition to House Bill 455. And I think it was you know five six years ago that I first testified before this committee in opposition to Real ID, and one of the reasons was one of the concerns about Real ID was that it required every driver's license to have a common machine readable technology. And a lot of us were very concerned that that technology was going to be RFID. So here, am I, here I am today asking you to ITL this bill, which would put RFID in some of our driver's licenses. Uh, the last speaker just said, this has nothing to do with the federal government. This is a state program. I ask you to look at page two of this bill. I ask you to look at lines three and four on page two where it specifically says in this legislation, if agreed to by the Department of Homeland Security. Do we have a Department of Homeland Security in New Hampshire? No. This bill is to comply with federal guidelines, to comply with federal requirements. This bill is not appropriate for New Hampshire citizens. Over the last three terms, one of them under a Republican majority, two of them under a Democratic majority, the House has passed bills that specifically said we will not include RFID in our driver's license. We have done this repeatedly. We've always run into trouble in the Senate uh, getting that through. But the House has always taken a strong position that we should not issue to our friends, our neighbors, our constituents. We should not issue them identification documents with a tracking device in them. These enhanced driver's licenses are designed to be read from 30 or more feet away. They are designed to be completely unencrypted. Yes. It's true that the unique ID number that they, they broadcast does not have any of your personal information attached to it, does not have any of your biometric data attached to it, but neither does your social security number. If I get your social security number, it doesn't tell me how tall you are, where you live, anything about that. It's only by using that unique ID number, which in so many databases, from my, my doctor to my bank and many other places, that unique ID number assigned to me is used to identify other personal information about me. And if we pass this bill, if we allow New Hampshire citizens to walk around broadcasting a, n a new unique ID number, I guarantee you retailers will use that unique ID number to identify people, to link that ID number to their personal information, their biometric data, to every other thing that you can think of, the same way they do with our social security number. The EPC standard that is, is uh, set forth in this bill is incredibly insecure. It's not encrypted. If you did want to put RFID in a driver's license or other document, uh, identity documents, there are better ways to do it. But the standard that the Department of Homeland Security has set forward that's in this bill is incredibly insecure. Um, even the prime sponsor admitted that the potential for personal tracking is there. Why would we want to adopt legislation that 
puts uh, puts standards in place for our constituents to be tracked. Um, previous speaker also mentioned that uh, cell phone tracking, that when you dial 911, the police or the authorities can immediately identify your location. That's, that's true, and one of the reasons I don't carry a cell phone, but that's only when you dial 911. These enhanced driver's licenses are active 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year, all the time your location can be monitored. Um, so this bill is very bad for New Hampshire, and I urge the committee to both find it in expedient to legislate. With that, Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you for your testimony. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, the Honorable Winters. Um, maybe you could answer this question for me. Do you know how much the RFID industry will benefit from this? Well, they would benefit enough that they have a paid lobbyist here in favor of this. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Under the bill. I think it's a chair, I think it's last second. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, do you know, because I don't know whether a passport right now that you get today has RFID encrypted information in it. So if you have to get a passport to travel, you are still opening yourself up to the same kind of, of observation, uh, you know. I, I do. Really. Thank you very much for the question. Um, and yes, the newer passports do have an RFID chip uh, inside them. If you look at your password and you see a symbol that looks sort of like a zero and equal sign, uh, sort of like a key, that indicates, uh, just at a glance, that there is an RFID chip inside. Also in that passport, are um, ele there's electronic shielding built into the passport, so that when the passport is closed, that chip cannot be read. It is secure. Only when you open it up from a very short read range with the encryption key printed on the passport itself can you decipher that personal information that's on the, the passport. So the passport is a, a good example of a secure way to use RFID. Uh, the enhanced driver's license is not. Any further questions? Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Claire Eagle. I'm the executive director of the New Hampshire Civil Liberties Union. And I have been involved in the fight against real ID since before there was a fight for real ID. I did not know what the status of this committee was in the new legislature. So I looked at this bill and thought about amending it. Because it is optional. It is voluntary. However, as the representative pointed out, that which starts out voluntary may very soon become mandatory. So my first hope on this bill is that you would bury it with the rest of the attempts to put RFID chips in our lives. This is real ID. It's just real ID light. Only some of us would have it. It's not all of New Hampshire citizens, just those who would volunteer to do it. But if you decide not to kill this, if you do want to pass something because it's voluntary, I would urge that you consider do doing the following things. The first is, on line three, delete the word retention. And so the exception to the Real ID law would read the taking and use of facial images, signatures, etc., so that no biometric data would be retained. As you all know, right now you are required to give your social security number when you renew your New Hampshire driver's license in order for them to determine if you, if you are in violation of, of ERISA, if you owe child support in, in Nevada or, or Guam. But you can request, once that search is done, that that number be removed from your file, and it will be, so that it is not retained. Your social security number is not retained in your driver's file if you request that it be removed. 
So I would suggest that if you're going to pass anything like this, the first thing you should do is to say no biometric data at all will be retained. If you lose your biometric ID, you're going to have to resubmit the bio, the bio, bio, whatever that word is, um, the biometric data. And that will simply be an additional cost. <coughs> but at least there would not be biometric data kept in the system. Because my fear is and always has been, as a confirmed card carrying Luddite, there is no firewall strong enough to protect us. There is no data encryption strong enough to beat a hacker. If you collect it, they will come for it. And someone will try to get it, and the likelihood is someone will succeed. I would suggest as a second item, if you decide to pass this, that the, the Department of Safety be required to prepare and provide to each individual who seeks a biometric data driver's license or non-driver ID, that they be provided with a brochure that specifically informs them of how easy it is in relative terms to intrude on and to get this data, how much danger their financial and other security might be if someone gets this data. So that the individual getting the voluntary driver ID enhanced, though it may be, is fully informed. And I would suggest the third thing that you mandate if you decide to pass this bill is that the driver with an enhanced ID have the same kind of shield jacket that the passport has. So that it is protected from intrusion by someone who is 20 or 30 feet away from you, as long as it's closed and that you only have to open it to either show it to a police officer because you were going too fast. Well, no, you have legislative plates. You can never go too fast. But when, you know, when you're not in the legislature anymore, you have to show it to the police officer if you're speeding on 93 or anywhere else. Or you show it at the border if that's why you have it. And so in closing, Mr. Chair, I would urge the committee to very seriously consider the implications of putting the camel's nose under the tent flat. This is the beginning of real ID, voluntary though it may be. <coughs> and I would suggest that New Hampshire not go down this road. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Any questions? Thank you. Um, it's so good to see you. It's so good to be seen. It, it certainly is. And uh, and I thank you for all the good work you've done. Do you have any indication or knowledge of, of the track record in, in Vermont, say, or other states that now have this option of driver's license? Um, have there been any problems? Have any of these things occurred? <coughs> Representative Gagnon, there have been problems. I don't have the research information yet. It's, it's pretty new. And so people are gathering data. I called the, exec, the ACLU exec in Vermont and asked him if he is getting uh, calls, inquiries about problems, and he is. Um, and so I asked him if he does any tracking, or if, if he knows of anyone else who is tracking, if he would send me copies of the information. And if I get that, I will give it to you, and I will give it to the chair of the committee. But there is no process, there is no data system that is perfect ever. And so everything has problems. But I asked specifically about this one, and he said, yes, they are receiving complaints. Because this has been in place in Vermont, what, for four or five years now? I think it was enacted four and a half years ago. I think it's only been in place for three and a half, but I put that, <clears throat> my memory's not. That's good. Super. Okay. No further questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, for the record, my name is Rick Bailey. I'm the Director of the Division of Motor Vehicles. Um, the Department supports 
this bill uh, primarily because it's an optional service that we believe some of the constituents, especially those along the northern border, uh, would be interested in. Uh, as to the question about the uh, fiscal note, I'm not sure why it isn't here. We did do one. Um, but the real driving factor, as the sponsor alluded to, is the implementation date. We have a capital project uh, that I spoke about earlier to replace the aging infrastructure of our motor vehicle system. As long as the implementation of this bill uh, comes at or after the implementation of the new system, we don't believe there'll be a significant uh, impact in the cost to upgrade the infrastructure. The new system should be able to handle it. Uh, the cost of the $30 per license, we believe, will cover the additional cost uh, of the more stringent uh, document checks that are required to receive uh, an enhanced driver license. Uh, so the fiscal note was fairly minor. There's a little bit of timing uh, uh, language in there, but as long as the uh, implementation date that's in here, uh, we should be fine without any significant financial impact. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Bailey. Um, what, you know, the Zebul just made a very, I thought, positive suggestion in regards to uh, having some kind of a shield jacket that, that exists now in the present passport. Is that something that you could envision adopting or? Uh, Again, it really just becomes, it, it would be the cost of the creation of the yeah. document. Um, we did some preliminary uh, investigation. I don't believe any of the states that have uh, the documents now do much other than use a, a regular driver license card with uh, the RFID chip in it. Uh, but certainly, I believe that technology would be there. Um, it could, it, I'm sure, it would increase the production cost um, because I'm not sure how you would get the uh, document inside the shield. I'm not aware of anybody that makes them yet, but I think it could probably be done. And, and could you give us any information on, on how the successor or problems that may have existed in the state of Vermont with implementing this? Um, I, I had a brief discussion with uh, members of uh, Mr. Ide's staff, and they were positive. They had not heard any um, negative feedback uh, at that point. Uh, and uh, AMVA, the information that we got on the other states uh, that have implemented the program, it's all been voluntary. Uh, so we haven't heard any negatives at this point. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you, Director. How are we going to get, who's going to put the information into the AMCA license so it looks just like an AMCA license, so it doesn't look like a different license? Is, is that the intention? Well, the, the license would look the same. It would have embedded in the plastic or within the shielding mechanism uh, an RFID chip that would be a unique number uh, assigned to that document. The actual, the license itself doesn't have to change its look dramatically um, to meet the requirements. It does have to change and say, um, there's a verbiage requirement where we have the enhanced driver's license, it has to say, I think, enhanced driver's license uh, or something along those lines. Maybe EDL might work, uh, but the guidelines require uh, very minimal change from what we have now. And it's still a New Hampshire driver's license, still issued by the state of New Hampshire. Uh, I have a question for you. Presently, does New Hampshire communicate, does New Hampshire with the Department of Motor Vehicles communicate with any federal agencies in Homeland Security with respect to our driver's licenses? Um, driver license information is available <coughs> um, to other states through the PDPS system and the commercial driver license uh, information system. Law enforcement uh, comes in through NCIC and has access to our state police uh, to motor vehicle records. And I believe that some of the federal law enforcement agencies are part of NCIC. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Do you know if uh, uh, the, the information that's required for this particular uh, EDL will be the same information for a passport? Or would you be asking for more information or less information? No, there's some, some documentation of who you are that is greater for a passport, and I think it's the same for EDL, that is more uh, stringent than what you do for a regular driver's license. Okay. 
if I if I had one of these EDLs, could I take it down to the passport office and say this is who I am, give me a passport? Or would you uh, then have to give them more information? You would still there, there's a, there's certain categories of types of information you have to have, and I believe they would accept the EDL just like they do a driver's license now as one of those pieces of information. But there are a number of others that you still have to provide. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Kirk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon to you and the members of the Transportation Committee. For the record, I'm Neil Kirk, uh, representing Hillsborough District 7, the towns of Goffstown and Ware, and I come in very strong opposition to this bill. Um, this bill is the camel's nose under the tent, and it's a tent that this legislature has, um, at great expense to the state budget, uh, kept the federal government out of. We passed a number of years ago Real ID, banning Real ID in New Hampshire, because it was, in effect, a national driver's, uh, excuse me, a national identification card system with, a nor with an enormous amount of data on New Hampshire citizens being transferred to the federal government. That's exactly what this bill does. It does it for a smaller number of people, and it's voluntary, but it sets up the system, and it is the start, and it's step one of what invariably will be an incremental system, so all of our data goes to Washington. Now, in response to the chairman's question, Mr. Bailey, I hope, made it clear that we control our motor vehicle database now, and we determine who has access to it. The database is in New Hampshire. It's not shipped out. It stays here. Um, to show you some of the problems with this bill, I'd like to go over it so that if you act on it, you'll correct these things. And frankly, I don't see how you could correct these things and still have a viable bill. Um, section 1, this is page 1, section 1D on lines 3 to 5. This is an exception to the existing ban under motor vehicle rules on biometric identifiers such as facial images and electronic signatures. And they need that exception in order to allow them for the enhanced driver's license. Um, if you go down to section 3, Roman 1 on page line 15, please note, the department may enter into a memorandum of understanding with any federal agency for the purpose of obtaining approval of the licensed uh, card as proof of identity and citizenship. All of a sudden, this information is going into a federal database. Number two, same page, lines 19, this is 2A. The department may issue the license who to someone who provides name, citizenship, identity, date of birth, social security number, resident address, a photographic identity document, and any other documents that may be required by the responsible federal agency. Please note the vastness of this kind of information and we are, in effect, turning over to a responsible federal agency the determination of what documents we are going to require from New Hampshire citizens. This paragraph is important because later on you'll see how all of this information gets shipped off to Washington. Going to D on the next page, This is line, on page two, lines one through eight. Um, may include an RFID, which is limited to a randomly assigned number which shall be encrypted if agreed to by the Department of Homeland Security. Translation into English, we can use the electronic product code standard, which basically has a read length of 30 feet to 60 feet and is unencrypted unless the Department of Homeland Security decides that they want it encrypted. In other words, again, we are turning over the security of New Hampshire citizens information <coughs> to a federal agency. Um, the card shall not include biometric data, which is, I think, a good thing. Notice, the department shall ensure that the radio frequency ID technology is secure from unauthorized access. But remember, the feds have access, authorized access to this. 
So this is hardly any protection for New Hampshire people. And it talks about measures to protect, protect against authorized disclosure of personal information. Um, personal information is not defined, but it presumably is something different from biometric data. Um, who decides what's personal information? That is to say, what's protected and what is not protected. Going on to line 26, Roman 3a2, you have to provide documentation demonstrating the applicant's United States citizenship, etc. All of this is going to be digitized and shipped off to Washington. Going on to B on the same page, that's line 32. Shall have his facial image and signature captured or reproduced by the department at the time of application. And it may be used, may be made, made available by this state and used as follows. By a federal, state, or local government agency for any law and purpose, law enforcement purpose authorized by law. Federal law, state law, law means rules and statute, not statute, rules and statute. So the Department of Safety, under the guise of this language, could expand whatever they wish to by simply having rules to expand the, the uh, purpose for which this could be used. Same thing for the federal government. They could do this by rule, not congressional statute. This information goes to another state to the extent required by federal law, again, ceding to the feds control over New Hampshire's driver's license system. And I thought we had the Tenth Amendment here. By the department for any other purpose specifically authorized by law. Remember, law is statute and rules. Federal rules, state rules. This is the camel's nose under the tent in the, in the greatest extent. What we're doing here is allowing these folks to ship off to Washington and, and put in a database all of the information that people are required to provide if they opt for an enhanced driver's license. Um, and then four, for any other purposes determined by the department, provided a person agrees to it. That's not too bad. And then as otherwise, otherwise authorized by law, which I've already indicated is a problem. Um, if you look down at 5E, this is page 3, line 11. Um, the on, on, uh, where is it recorded? Section E says that the department can require additional information if the applicant has, if it, and can reject all of these documents. And even if it rejects them, all of this information has to go down to Washington. The department retains copies or digital images <coughs> of these documents. We're creating our own dossier on people with all of the information that's contained in any document, from their citizenship papers to their birth certificates, anything, is now in a database that our Department of Safety is creating when we have specifically denied them the ability to do this when it comes to regular driver's licenses. There is, there is one saving grace here. If you go down to H and I on this page, H is on line 25, the department may disclose digital images of documents retained under this section to federal, state, or local law enforcement agencies for any law enforcement purpose authorized by law. Again, ship it all off, create a database. But then, you'll be pleased to note in I, the department shall not compile or maintain a database under this section that may be shared with any country other than the United States. I'm filled with joy. Basically, this is an effort to co-opt the state government in violation of the federal constitution as determined by the United States Supreme Court in a case called New York versus U.S. When this house, several years ago, and the legislature rejected Real ID, 
we gave up $3 million in a hard-fought battle for an earmark in Washington by Sen Senator Gregg so that it wouldn't cost us anything to participate in Real ID. We were one of a few um, lead states. We said no. The protection of our residents' privacy against the federal database and claiming all of this information for Washington was too important. And other states followed. And now Real ID is a law that's hollow on the federal books because nobody is enforcing it. The feds came up with something called Pass ID, a variation on Real ID, and now the enhanced driver's license a variation on this. We need to say no again. This is not good for New Hampshire citizens. I understand that it will make a difference, or some people believe it will, if you can shave a few minutes off or a few seconds off going through a crossing and transact business that way. But that's too high a price to pay, in my opinion, for the potential danger to our privacy and freedom that goes with the state and national databases that this bill <coughs> specifically says are authorized. Mr. Chairman, I urge this committee to vote this bill out ITF, and I'd be pleased to answer any questions that may have. Thank you, Representative. Any questions? Representative Hawks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Representative Kirk, for your spirit of testimony here. Uh, I just have one, you know which way I stand on this bill. I, I, I'm <laughs> getting the uh, I like that uh, really good. My question is, my question is, and, and just, it, it's, I would like you to confirm for me if you believe this is true, that if you do get a passport, which will enable you to travel to Canada, you in fact have to give them all this information anyway. That so if you're going to travel to these places where you can go with this card, you still have to get a passport without this card and give the feds all this information. Is that, is that not correct? Um, I can't answer that because I don't know the answer. I don't know that all of the information that you give on a passport, or may be required to give on a passport, is the same, more or less, than what is required to be given to get an enhanced driver's license. Um, moreover, I do not know whether passport information is shared with law enforcement officials. Um, but I would point this out. We, in this legislature, can't control what the federal authorities do with respect to passports. But we, in this legislature, can control what our Department of Motor Vehicle does with respect to New Hampshire driver's licenses. And even if the premise of your question is correct, and it may be, I just don't know, um, it would be wrong for us to go ahead and create these databases both in New Hampshire and out of New Hampshire when we don't know what further uses will be made of them out of state. And we will not be able, under this bill, to control the department as to what use is made of the databases within state. They have complete authority under the rules to do what they wish with this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Uh, Representative Kirk, you, you always uh, are uh, a champion for uh, individual rights. The, um, the question, though, I have is, is that in Director Bailey's presentation, he said that at present, communication of New Hampshire licenses, data on New Hampshire licenses, is shared with federal law enforcement agencies through NCIC, correct? So this would just provide a chip on uh, an optional chip on your enhanced driver's license that would be read by TSA folks at the, the border. I mean, they already can access this data information anyway, so I, I, I'm really concerned as to, I don't, I'm confused as to what's the difference. First, there is a separate concern about access to this data by unauthorized users since the, since the RFID chips that may be used and the department could have something stronger may be unencrypted, maybe because they, they have that authority if they wish, and maybe the information on it, which could just be an identification number, and therefore without other information of little use in and of itself. I'm putting aside that to answer your question. Let's just talk about the data. Right now, the data that you refer to resides in a New Hampshire database. 
and it's queried on a one-on-one -on -one basis. A fellow named Kirk comes up. We have reason to think he's committed a crime. The cops can have access to that database, DMV, for purposes of finding out where Kirk is and his address and things like this. But they do not have access to the entire database for any other purpose. If this information is shipped down to Washington, those restrictions are eliminated. The entire database of ESL drivers would be down there, usable for any purpose and outside of our control. So right now, what we control, we limit under this bill. All of this would go down to Washington or be in New Hampshire. And the entire database, not just a single query, would be available to the state and to law enforcement. That, to me, is a very big difference and an important difference. Thank you. Yeah. Representative Rowe. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. What is different about the information that would be in this than the information that those of us who file a tax return with the federal government, they have access to already? Uh, assuming that the federal law is followed, and in most cases it is, access to the information you give to the Internal Revenue Service is available to federal folks on a case-by-case -case basis. That is to say, individually identifiable tax returns are, are protected, not just in New Hampshire, not only in New Hampshire for New Hampshire tax returns, but in Washington. Uh, they contain very different kinds of information than the kinds of information that we're talking about here. Um, when you fill out your tax return, you don't tell them that you're a citizen necessarily. Well, in some cases you have to, but in most cases you don't have to tell them that you're an American citizen. Uh, you don't have to tell them where you were born. You tell them your name and address and you know where you made your money. Um, but it's different, and I may be incorrect on the specifics that I just gave you, but it's different kinds and limited kinds of information that you give the IRS. Also, there are many restrictions on the information in Washington from a tax return that makes it in a, inaccessible to other people. We know that President Nixon got in trouble when he tried to get tax returns of various people, and we know that a number of tax department empl IRS employees have been fired because they looked up, uh, let's say, some movie star's tax return. So I, I, maybe I'm not following your question, but I don't see the relationship between the fact that we have a database in Washington controlled by the feds that deals with tax information and a database in Washington controlled by the feds that deals with passport information, neither of which we can do anything about, and this bill which says, let's create another database of a subset of New Hampshire citizens and ship that down to the federal government. That's the problem. Because once we ship that down, Mr. Bailey in a few years will come and say, look, we're already doing this. Let's just expand it for every New Hampshire driver's license. It'll make it much easier for us to access airports or whatever it is at that time. I don't want that situation. We need to stop this, cut off the head of the snake before it bites us. That was not Mr. Bailey. I was not suggesting that Mr. Bailey was a snake. Please. <laughs> No more testimony. Uh, we'll come Chairman, Mr. Chairman, can I just make one statement with regard, please? Uh, two things just crossed my mind. You know, if you want to travel out of country, folks, you need to share some data. But more so, the lady who testified had a great idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. When we have, when we get the Easy Pass, it comes with a an envelope that you can put your Easy Pass in. Certainly an enhanced driver's license or anything else that has RFID in it could go into a sleeve like that, and that would make it extremely easy to address that particular question. So that was an excellent idea that you had. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, all right. The meeting is uh, in my turn. <laughs> I'll take a bump and something. This is Oscar.